History is not written, it's lived. Two seconds. And then left for others to write about. Over the past three decades, legends have been born. McNamara, a deep throw! Moments have been seized. You can't survive! The material for the history books is still in the making. Two black ones for the win! Go These are the leading characters in the next chapter. The players headlining Broadway in the world's most electric city on its most historic stage. As it has been for 30 years. It is his show at the moment. The best show in town. The Big East Championship. Look at the celebration. Mullen, a two and a half. You can't survive. Hawkins is upset. Look at you and your son. Sideline show. The 30th Big East Championship continues from Madison Square Garden in New York City. Fans of West Virginia and Pittsburgh are accustomed to seeing each other in their backyards. Tonight, these two schools, separated by just 75 miles, have taken their backyard brawl rivalry to Broadway. Welcome, everyone, to Championship Week, presented by Dick Sporting Goods and ESPN's continuing coverage of the 2009 Big East Championship. Tonight, the third quarterfinal matchup of the day, the number seven seed, the West Virginia Mountaineers against the number two team of the country, the Pittsburgh Panthers. The top four seeds all began action in this Big East Championship today on day three of the tournament. Louisville dispatched Providence with these. Villanova won a great game against Marquette tonight. The Panthers and Mountaineers and later this evening, Connecticut and Syracuse. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Madison Square Garden. Sean McDonough along with Jay Billis and Bill Raftery. Delighted to have you with us for the 178th edition of the Backyard Brawl. This will be the third meeting of this season between these two longtime rivals. Pittsburgh won both ball games in the regular season. Sam Young had 20 plus in both games. Terrific. Well, Pittsburgh is a team full of men, and the, I think the biggest man on this team has been Sam Young. Sam Young is first team all Big East, and I'm not sure anybody has had a better season, more consistent at a higher level. The best shot fake in college basketball, the key is not just who's going to guard him. Can anybody guard him effectively in this game for West Virginia? And from young to old, as we welcome in Bill Raftery. But <laughs> Bo, even in rehearsal, that joke was uh, funny. Uh, actually, no, it wasn't. But, Bill, if it's going to be different tonight for West Virginia, what do they have to do? You think it's tough working with him? <laughs> it's tough working against Pittsburgh. They are so impressive. Physically imposing. We know what Blair can do. I think you have to match them physically and mentally. Anything up for grabs, you've got to be part of. And let's take a look at tonight's Star Watch. Well, first for West Virginia, Deshaun Butler. He is active. Or excuse me, Devin Ebanks. I thought it was Deshaun Butler. It's Devin Ebanks. <laughs> he's long. He's lanky. He's active. And an outstanding offensive rebounder. And I'm worried about Dewan Blair. He missed dinner tonight. He may not be physically imposing. What a tough kid. Dewan Blair, co-Big East Player of the Year, along with Hashim Thabit of Connecticut. Now the starting line was brought to you by Papa John's. West Virginia beat Notre Dame last night, their 22nd win of the year. Alex Ruoff at 25 points and Daryl Bryant at 17. They are the starting backcourt with Ebanks off the 18 rebound performance last night with the aforementioned Deshaun Butler <laughs> and Wellington Smith. A little extra air time tonight for Deshaun. Pittsburgh is 28 and 3, 15 and 3, the most wins they've ever had in the regular season in Big East play. Levance Fields leading the conference in assists and Jermaine Dixon, an excellent defender in the backcourt. Up front, Dewan Blair, good for a double-double just about every night with the senior Tyrell Biggs and Sam Young, their leading score, just under 19 points per game. These are the two best offensive rebounding teams in the Big East. West Virginia had 20 offensive boards against Notre Dame last night. Both coaches tonight say the rebounding will be the key. Pittsburgh dressed in white, and Dewan Blair won the tip. Sean McDonough, Jay Billis. The Mountaineers go. Nice Tyrell cut. Biggs to Sam Young, who scored off the nice cut. How about that diagonal screen? Not ready. There's Daryl Bryant. Mike Bray, the Notre Dame coach, felt he was the key to West Virginia's win last night. He came out making jump shots, and Notre Dame did not expect that. Nice rotation here and recovery. 
Bryant, a very important player. A lot on his shoulders for this West Virginia team against a very good Pittsburgh defense. And Bryant comes out firing again tonight. Runs down his own miss in the corner. He's a freshman from right here in the New York City area. Brooklyn went to St. Raymond's High School in the Bronx where he's the all-time leading scorer. Wellington Smith. Strong drive and Blair picks up a foul. And the one common denominator in the three Pittsburgh losses this year to Louisville, Villanova, and Providence. Blair in foul trouble in all of them. Bob Huggins, second season as head coach at his alma mater. And Wellington Smith at the line. How about what Huggins said to us before the game, Bill? He said, well, in order to win the Big East tournament, nope. all Goodness. we have to do is beat Notre Dame last night, beat Pittsburgh tonight, probably have to beat Connecticut tomorrow night, and then beat Louisville in the championship game if form holds at the higher seats win. So that means they'd have to beat three of the top five teams in the country tonight, tomorrow, and the next night. He said it would be easier to get to the final four than it would be to win the Big East tournament. Well, you wouldn't see any of those teams for either the regional final or the semis of the NCAA. Uh, of course, the sadness in his winning is uh, the outfit persists. Continue to wear the yellow tie and yeah, striped you, shirt. You predicted it last night. He's superstitious. He said, Bill said last night, Huggins, if they won, would win this, wear the same outfit tonight, and he has. It was dry cleaners. It did not go to the dry cleaner. He's starving. We asked him. Unfortunately, he gave the answer. The outfit did not hit the dry cleaner today. Pretty screen by Blair. Levance fields the miss, but there's Blair, the leading offensive rebounder in the country at just under six per game to give Pittsburgh a 4-2 lead. Blair just kept Wellington Smith on his hip for that entire possession. Smith could not get around him. And Smith is going to try to move Blair around on the other end. Screen and then come out and ball screen. Almost like to be, too. The drive on him, not a bad philosophy. He banks the tip of the Wellington Smith miss. Out of bounds, and it'll be West Virginia ball. Jim Burr, Michael Stevens, Wally Ritecki, the officials. Look at Blair. He goes right into Smith, and then he just cracks him right there and doesn't allow Wellington Smith to get around and help or get to the glass. And an offensive foul called against West Virginia. The last game they played was a foul fest, the game at the Peterson Event Center. Jamie Dixon with a chance to make history tonight. 160 wins in six seasons. The all-time record for most wins in the first six seasons for head coach is 161 by Everett Case of NC State back in the late 40s and early 50s. Renowned coach. We talked one night about this. The underground subway tune it up deep. I like the idea of driving, Jay. Especially when you got Blair under yeah. that far out. Don't settle for a jumper. Nice kid. Who's Dixon? Did he take it? Jermaine Dixon, junior from Baltimore, the younger brother of the former Maryland star, Juan Dixon. Isn't it amazing how you take a bad or questionable shot and it's often the first pass in your opponent's fast break? How many layups do you see after a questionable shot? And against both these teams, you've got to get easy ones. Bryant penetrated and scored from the elbow. Bob Huggins felt like the Mountaineers defended well in both of the losses in the regular season to Pitt. He said, we just have to play better offense. We didn't score enough. And we, they gave it up, too. He felt coughed it up. Young's a tough kid on the box, too. Can move it out, put it down. That's a shot back. There it is. Probably didn't go for the fake. Young still drove the baseline. And the tip for Blair wouldn't go, but he was fouled on the tip attempt, and he will shoot two. You know, Bob Huggins can't believe it. Knocking Blair down is some feat. Physically impossible. There's never a time that Dewan Blair does not go to the offensive glass. He is absolutely relentless. He looks like he's bulked up a little bit this year, oh, just in the last couple of months. I thought you meant Huggins. No, well, well Huggins too. <laughs> but Blair looks like he's put on some weight in the last couple of months. They list him at 6'7", 265. Sophomore from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Grew up just a few hundred yards away from the Peterson Event Center. Uh, when they won the Super Bowl, Pittsburgh, he was on the float. I mean, he could be assumed to be one of the... He was the float. <laughs> they rode him. Uh, just a big, tough-looking guy. Perfect football body, too. That shows those career numbers of 
6.6 rebounds. That's what oh. he gets offensively now. Got to seal that one. In his career, he averages 10.6 rebounds per game overall. Among the best in Pittsburgh history, Bryant the miss and Sam Young the rebound. And Fields looks healthy, Sean. We were concerned a little bit. Fields had limited practice time the last few days with a groin injury. Had an assist for Levance. He averages 7.6 assists per game. And Blair has five points now for the Panthers, who are up by five. He runs the floor, gets set up, and in position to dominate Blair. This Pittsburgh team just has so many more weapons. Ooh, I don't know. Good call. Ooh. Good call. Good call. He was in the air. Boy, but why take the risk? I, oh, I agree. Absolutely. But Blair should not have taken that risk. No. And that's his second foul. And as we mentioned, when he's in foul trouble, they struggle. The NCAA Women's Basketball Championship, March 21st through April 7th. There is that time of the year. So many of these games take on added meeting. These two teams will definitely be in the NCAA tournament. Pittsburgh, a likely number one seed. The Panthers lead this one by five, but a problem for them. Dewan Blair now with two fouls. Alex Ruoff curls off of Wellington Smith. Blair is there to help out, but he shouldn't have taken this angle. Ruoff is essentially going straight out of bounds. He should have angled him off to make a shot really difficult instead of jumping in front of him and risking this foul. I mean, that, that is not something that Dewan Blair is good at doing, is taking charges. And I thought that was an unnecessary risk that puts them in a big bind right now. He was in foul trouble in all three of their losses. He was actually in foul trouble in the last game against West Virginia, which they won. He had four fouls in that game and played only 16 minutes, scored eight points. But Pitt still managed to defeat West Virginia that night. You know, Sean, he was out of position there. He should have hedged harder up top. But when you're out of position, you just can't foul because you've made a mistake. And also, Ruoff forced the issue, which was smart. He's using that dribble a little bit. And Pittsburgh had trouble clearing the defensive glass there without Blair in the game. Deshaun Butler, a couple of opportunities. Tyrell Biggs, the foul, his first. And, and so this is the one concern you might have coming NCAA tournament time. Uh, they don't play big with a Blair out of the ball game. It's a more of a forward-oriented basketball team. And the game just has not come along as well as they would like. And one thing they're going to have that Pittsburgh is going to have to adjust to pretty quickly is West Virginia is curling off these screens that they're setting around the free throw line. They're going to have to hedge up there and make that cutter change his path and give uh, the trail defender an opportunity to catch up. Otherwise, they're going to be giving up layups and they're going to continue to foul. And I think this motion is very tough on a pit team that likes to stand you up. Good front by Ruoff. One of the best steal men in West Virginia history. Devin E. Banks to Alex Ruoff, their all time leading three point shooter as well as Ruoff. 257 now to break Kevin Pitznagel's record by four. There was the curl and a good job by Fields to stay there to bump the cutter and make him change his path attack. You know, all they have to do is slide behind it if they're going to continue. Now they might pop back out. Well, well, that's what I would do, take the shortcut. The first thing you need to jump to the ball. You can't let a cutter cut across Ooh. your face. Bryant to Ebanks, freshman to freshman, and Ebanks was fouled by Gilbert Brown, his first. This was a great switch on the back screen by Alex Ruoff. Anticipated, he switched it, jumped in front, and took that ball away from Sam Young, who would have had an easy basket had not Ruoff been so alert to switch. And conversely, Jay, the other end, uh, you had mentioned they're cutting well, West Virginia. They're leading the defender to the ball. That is really unlike Pitt, particularly after that UConn game where they played great defense at the end of the year. You know, Bill, I don't think Pittsburgh is nearly as good of a defensive team as they've been in the past. They are not quite as physical. They're a much better offensive team. Mm -hmm. Much better. Mm -hmm. He banks with the free throws to make it a one-point game. Bob Huggins' team trying to take advantage of this stretch here with Dewan Blair on the bench. Gilbert the Brown in for him. Sorry, Sean. The automatic switching continues on down screens. They need to start looking for the screener. The screener's going to be open essentially on a slip. And also posting up a smaller guy on the switch. Brown, strong drive.
the shot a little short. Tyrell Biggs there to put it back up and in. Biggs. Biggs looked like he got hit there. Yeah, he did get whacked, but he's important. He's going to be the guy that's going to get the minutes for Blair. And this five-out motion is really hard to guard. Well, you got to be ready, and jumping to the ball, as you mentioned, is key. you got to lead the guy in a cut. You can't trail. And you got to meet him by taking the shortcut. There's John Butler. Butler. And now he banks out to Ruoff. They're down to 10 to shoot. Good job by Young to step out. He banks had it blocked. Jermaine Dixon with good defense. He held his ground. And Kevin Jones goes out for <laughs> West Virginia. Pittsburgh has to do a better job of jumping to the ball. Once a pass is made, you have to jump toward the ball, and that way you can take away the ball side of a cut. Nice play by Ruoff. He knew the clock, the situation, the ability to elevate, and Dixon with a real tardy closeout. You got to control the guy in that situation. Well, West Virginia looks very, very sharp. That they do. Well, then this time they missed, had a little mishap. Two followed one. And they are out in the passing lane, Sean. So athletic, so long, they're just young. The best scoring defense team in the Big East, West Virginia. Their opponents just over 61 points per game, and that's for the team that's not particularly big. Bob Huggins marvels at how well they can guard given the lack of size. Young in transition lays it in. Could have given it up as well, but pretty good adjustment with the left hand. That helps your half-court stuff when you get the cheapies. The big truck Bryant got a little welcome to the Big East tournament there, <laughs> driving in and getting a bump, and the ball goes the other way. That feels with pretty good hands as well. You have got to take it strong, and you better expect contact. This is tiring to guard. First one advantage you would think for Pittsburgh tonight. This is their first game of this Big East Championship. They had the double bye. West Virginia had to play last night. There hasn't been a win yet, guys, in this tournament by a team that played the night before while their opponent had the night off. I don't know if it was fatigue, though, Sean. It's just better play, and this is the run out and a great adjustment. Little kids with the left. Oh, but that just makes you a little more vulnerable in your half court when you can be a threat where she's threatening right now. Didn't like the defensive play. Ebanks was called for the foul. Bryant went to the bench and got scolded by Coach Huggins. Threw off the steal. Gilbert Brown looked like he was going to jump and try to block it, then backed away at the end. Levance fields the quick response, but it went off the hands of Young. Trying to squeeze it, not a bad look. Deshaun Butler off to Ebanks. He's fouled and a chance for three. West Virginia takes the lead with 12 minutes to go in the first half. Well, he can do so many things. Handy the way he runs to the floor, Jake. The athleticism and one of the ways that you keep from getting bumped and chucked in your half-court offense is to run the floor and get something easy in transition. It looked like Pitt was going to get something easy. They mishandled the ball, and West Virginia alertly took it the other way. E Banks, part of the highly touted freshman class. They've all lived up to the hype. E Banks on the all freshman team in the Big East. And he's going to be a heck of a player. He is one now. In fact, he should have been on the Star Watch, not Deshaun Butler. Yeah, I would agree. <laughs> well, at least he got the name of the university right. Young, nice pass into him by Biggs. And that's one way to defuse the switching. I know there wasn't any motion involved in that, but get it to the box. Tied at 15. West Virginia has outscored Pitt 11 to 6 since Dewan Blair went to the bench with his second foul. And Butler with a deep two. Quick shot off the bump back. But they weren't ready for this. You got to get back. And that was Butler pointing at one another. No, Flowers saying, I had him. But Butler did not respond quickly. Well, that's what you call running on a make. Get the ball in quickly, get it up the sideline, and catch him napping in transition defense. Brad Wanamaker recently into the game with the bucket. John Flowers for West Virginia into the game, 41. He found Ebanks from the corner. Goes, he smoothed that kid under control. He's a small forward at that side, no question. 6'9", no? 205, highly recruited out of St. Thomas More in Connecticut, committed to Indiana, and then changed his mind when they had the coaching change, wound up here at West Virginia. 
Wellington Smith rebounds the young miss. West Virginia ball up by two. They've outscored the Panthers by seven since Blair left the game with a second foul. Two fouls now on Tyrell Biggs. When we come back, we'll have a championship week update. So Virginia Tech advances to take on North Carolina, the number one team in the country. Florida State and Georgia Tech, the other quarterfinal matchup is set. Wake Forest will get the winner of that game that's going on right now at ESPN2. Later tonight at the ACC, Boston College against Virginia, the winner to get Duke. As is so often the case, this game changed for Pittsburgh when Dewan Blair got in foul trouble. He's on the bench with two fouls. And West Virginia has taken the lead by two against Pittsburgh. The Panthers have been in the Big East Tournament Championship game seven of the last eight years. They won it all here at Madison Square Garden last year. Two titles, right? Two or three as well. Ben Hallen started. Jamie just following suit. Panthers on their way to the NCAA tournament for the eighth year in a row. That'll be the longest streak among Big East schools. Nice kick. Foul prone. He stepped out of bounds or a curl? Looks like they had a hook on him. Yeah. He hooked Gary McGee, who just came off the bench, the 6'10 sophomore, who sees limited playing time for the Panthers. And that leg got in there. He's a kid that they, I think he's got to help, Jay. This, this is a area that they could use some solid minutes, maybe five or six a game, you know, just to give Blair a blow in this kind of a situation with foul problems. Uh, you take the Hippocratic Oath for substitutes, come in and do no harm. Mm -hmm. Nice drive. Gilbert Brown fouled on the drive. He has a 38 inch vertical leap and we saw evidence of that there. Terrific history in the Big East Championship for the Panthers. This is their 27th appearance in the event. Two championships, 03 and 08. And they won four games last year to win it. They had, by their standards, a disappointing season last year in terms of the overall record. They lost 10 games, which is the most in the Jamie Dixon era, but they still managed to excel here at the Garden. They pack a few suits when they come to the Garden. Mm -hmm. They're here for the duration. And of course, this year it's all about the NCAA guys for them. Yep. And that's the ambition. They'll move on, survive, advance. And what is different? I think there's a toughness about this team that's just a little bit different than last year. In the Ben Howland, Jamie Dixon era, that's the one obstacle still to overcome. They have not made it past the Sweet 16 in the NCAA tournament, despite having among the best teams in the country year in and year out over the last seven or eight years. Young couldn't handle the pass. Cam Thurman had it deflect off him and out of bounds. Thurman just into the ball game for West Virginia. Banger inside at 6'7", 225. And McGee with a great job defensively. That's all they have to do. He stepped over there, got in front of Ruoff, threw up a wild kind of delivery, and a better pass. They would have had a, a lead to the rim, would have given an opportunity basket. Yeah, McGee started with a hard hedge and then recovered really yeah. nice. They had a sense of urgency. That really was well done defensively. Ashton Gibbs in the game now for Pittsburgh, inbounding the ball. One of the best three-point shooters by percentage in the conference. And he is not afraid to jack him either. He comes in well oiled and drilled. Over 44% from three for Gibbs. And as he went on a cut, he was held. I don't know if they gave it to Thurman, was it? It was on yeah. Cam Thurman, the red shirt sophomore out of Portsmouth, Ohio. His first. That was a little matchup zone look. I wouldn't be surprised if we uh, saw some different looks uh, second half particularly maybe a 1-3-1 one, one zone Brad Wanamaker McGee jumped a little too early it popped off the rim over his head Deshaun Butler for three for West Virginia well he can be quiet and then step up you got to recognize the ability deep grew off not on the floor you got to hug him Timeout called by Jamie Dixon. His squad down by four. Sean McDonough, Jay Billis, Bill Raftery. 
Allen Hopkins on the sideline. West Virginia leading Pittsburgh by four. The officials want to look at this three by Butler to make sure, and he was well behind the college line. And the, the interesting part is how free he was on that particular one. He's the guy you have to pick up. He and Ruoff, you've got to pick mm -hmm. up in transition and find him outside of that line. Everybody else, you've just got to cover up the 10. Butler had 20 points last night. He had 20 points or more in seven Big East games this season. So he did major scoring against some of the best teams in the country. So did Sam Young. His shot rattled out, and it's run down by Cam Thurman. Well, Thurman really hedged high and didn't recover. They got a real clean look. And with Blair not out there, no second shots at all for Pitt. No hand challenge, and Young didn't get up. That's a two for Kevin Jones. The freshman from Mount Vernon, New York. There are five West Virginia players who hail from the New York City area, including Kevin Jones. He's got that distance. He only takes uh, two threes, but he's got that long deuce in his arsenal. He struggled shooting it against Notre Dame, but had some really good minutes in that game. Active and athletic. Good D by Thurman. That's why he's in there. He deflected it off. Sam Young and out of bounds. Big East quarterfinal game, West Virginia and Pittsburgh. The backyard brawl, these two neighbors. And the winner goes to the semifinal tomorrow night, be the second semifinal of the night, approximately 9 o'clock. And we'll play the winner of the game still to come tonight between Connecticut and Syracuse. First game of this Big East championship for Connecticut. They're on a three-game losing streak in the Big East championship. So did you have a rule when you had a player with two fouls in the first half, especially early? Uh, Young oh, off the fade from Fields. Well, that's the toughness you're looking for. Fields comes in without Blair on the floor. I'm looking for somebody to step up. Jay, yes and no, it depended on the kid. Right? Like if you were senior, I might let you go. We were always lean, though. So was my salary. Those Fields again in the mix. And when you're down by 40 points, it doesn't matter if your guy plays for two or three fouls. <laughs> Send it in! Young and restless at the tip. Well, they have an eye on a number one seed, obviously, in the NCAA tournament. Pittsburgh very likely to be a number one seed in the dance. Trailing here. By four against West Virginia, two teams that know each other very well, and we welcome in our good pal, Alan Hawkins. Thanks, Sean. Well, needless to say, these two teams know each other very well. They meet in conference play, schools separated by just 75 miles. But these teams also know each other from the summer league. They play at the Green Street Rec Center in Pittsburgh throughout the summer. All these players know each other very well. And for West Virginia, they hope that familiarity will help them prevent a three-game sweep at the end of their backyard rivals, Pittsburgh Panthers. Back to you. Yeah, it is one of the great rivalries in college athletics. As a matter of fact, both games we'll see tonight were featured on ESPN's Rivalry Week. We had one of the West Virginia Pitt games during Rivalry Week, and we had a Connecticut Syracuse game. Ruoff, beautifully executed play right out of bounds. Well, you're not ready at all, Jay, huh? A little screen for the screen or nothing. Not the same Pitt D. Well, I agree with what you said earlier, Jay. They're definitely not as good defensively. That's been the hallmark of their success in recent years, but they are better offensively. Dixon scores. Don't you think that's largely because they get out and run more? They get more easy baskets in transition, where in years gone by, they played a half court oriented game. That's part of it. But the other part of it is they're a better shooting team. They've got more guys that can shoot it. And they're also much better as an offensive rebounding team because of Blair. I mean, they get 43% of their misses, and those are always high percentage second opportunities. They know they're good, Sean. You know what I mean? So they, maybe they do relax mentally on the defensive end. It's, it's a good. different, different makeup defensively. Deep shot by Jones wouldn't go. Here's Levant Fields right on cue, pushing it for Pittsburgh. Boy, everything but, huh? And when you talk to Tommy Harry and their outstanding assistant coach, he said, well, why wouldn't we run more? We've got the best point guard in the country, or one of them. He's the best assist man in the Big East, best in the country in assist to turnover ratio. They've got a lot of athletes who can run with him in transition. He makes great decisions, no question about it. 
Nice little bounce screen. And Ruoff, the deep three, hit the deck trying to get a call. He didn't get it. Young the rebound, under six minutes to go. First half, tipped down by four, playing without Dewan Blair. Got two early fouls. Now they have a chance to get within one. And one way, and Wanamaker has the bucket. And one way of breaking down switching defenses is to put it on the deck. And you see the pinch a little late, staying at home on the shooter. Uh, Butler's got to get a hand, more than a hand in there. He just he didn't help his partner at all. Yeah, that was just an easy, strong, straight line drive. You've got an angle out that drive. You can't allow it straight line to the basket. Wanamaker's been a very nice role player, bench player. Had the big game Saturday when they won the regular season finale at home against Connecticut. 75% free throw shooter. He's made it a one point game. He's another guy that can come in and make shots. He shoots almost 45% from three in Big East play. He can play the point when Fields is not in the game. Small lineup out there now with Fields, Wanamaker, and Dixon for Pittsburgh. And Young's really the five man, the center. Bryant, shot clock at seven. Steve, even if it goes, that was excellent defense. And the rebound down to Jermaine Dixon. Ruoff defending. Pretty oh, 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 how nice is that? What Fields did, right off to Gilbert Brown. What did you say about his ability, Sean? In the open floor. Just run. The general will get it to you. Seven straight points for Pittsburgh. And even without Blair in the game, the Panthers have the lead. Back at Madison Square Garden, hosting the 30th Big East Championship. One of the reasons this has become one of the premier events in college athletics, the fact that it's here. Sean, you mentioned how small they're playing. Dixon helps out as a guard. And how about the feel, the look? And that acknowledgement is gorgeous. And they were saying he's got a little bit of a hernia problem, and the back is fine. He looks pretty healthy. Mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier, limited practice time the last few days for Levance Field. But back in his hometown, he's from Brooklyn. He's ready to go, as the Panthers always are when they come to New York. And Wanamaker staying right at home on Butler. He's got to. Blew off underneath. And it wouldn't drop for Thurlman. Thurlman had two points last night. He has scored now in only three of their last 14 games. He's in there mostly for his rebounds and defending. Nine minutes a game for Cam Thurman. You know, Sean, the development of Ruoff as a total basketball player under Bobby Huggins has been extremely impressive. Just that little drive and the crack. I remember he was a catch and shoot guy uh, and did all of the back cuts, of course, with John Beeline, but now he has a, a real understanding to have contribute. He's become a complete player, mm -hmm. not just a shooter. Harriman gives West Virginia the lead again with 442 to go in the half. And just joining us, Juan Blair, co biggest player of the year, picked up his second foul for Pittsburgh. Four minutes into the game, the Panthers led by five at the time, nine to four. Juan's been on the bench ever since. West Virginia. With a one point lead now and a foul. A little post up there, and Butler got on the high side, a little small change. Those are such tough calls. I mean, you're fighting for low post position, and you're not allowed to dislodge the offensive player, but oftentimes a smart offensive player like Sam Young will dislodge the defender. And 99 times out of 100, that's called on the defense. And it's going to result in Deshaun Butler joining Blair on the sidelines. Deshaun just got his second personal. Hey, Sean, he's really charming. Isn't he? He's got a smile. You can learn a little bit by example there. And he's upbeat, that kid. Sam Young, a one and one. Well short with the front end, but they get the rebound. Dixon, a little floater from the elbow. Well off the mark. Tyrell Biggs in the right spot. And he knocks it down. Baseline jumper out of the corner for the senior Biggs playing in his 137th career game at Pittsburgh tonight. Only Sam Young at 139 has played in more games as a Panther. And so he can really drill that open jump shot. He's a very skilled shooter. Yeah, very much so. Deshaun Butler 
short with the turnaround. That's where he should have muscled Dixon right to the rim. Because he could have picked up a foul there. What a pass. Oh. And it was out of bounds. Gilbert Brown. That pass a little bit too hot to handle. One point lead for the number two team in the country as we approach halftime here at Madison Square Garden. The date against Louisville, Reese was telling us about all the surprises around the country. Not here at the Big East Championship. The top eight seeds all advanced to the quarterfinals, and the two favorites won earlier today. Uh, Reese got lucky. Uh, John Saunders had Digger today. He's got Jay. Under three and a half minutes to go. First half, West Virginia with the ball down by one. And, and you know, it's interesting. They should have been able to stretch it just a little without Blair. They've been unable to. Tough for D. They've been four points. They've outscored Pitt by four since Blair left the game. Traveling turns it back over. Bob Huggins electing to leave Deshaun Butler in the game with two fouls while Blair sits with his two for Pitt. Yeah, you can see, oh my goodness, little slip and slide. Right, he had Brown up in the air. Here's a little 1-3-1 one, now by West Virginia, giving a little different look defensively. And they, they went back to tape for John Beeline against Pitt to see how this would be effective. And he's saving it for the end of the half here. Tough shot. And Jermaine Dixon along with the three and then Tyrell Biggs called for the foul as he went over the back on the rebounding action. It works. You get a shot like that, uh, force a deep shot. Well, that's what the 1-3-1 wants you to do. It's going to make you throw the ball side to side instead of going north-south where it's vulnerable is if you can get it to the middle but also on the baseline. If you can go baseline in the corners, you can get some good things by throwing over the top against a 1-3-1. And Pitt against a 1-3-1 goes 2-1-2, Jay, just to support what you're saying. And they'll also flash in there. You get a corner jumper. I think you got to squeeze him at the elbow and find either opposite or the same side short corner. You still have to, exactly, you still have to dribble penetrate against it mm -hmm. because that's always effective against zone defenses no matter what it is. More front court foul trouble for Pittsburgh. That personal on Biggs was his third, the eighth team foul. Butler made the front end. West Virginia perfect from the line. Now 11 for 11. Now look who's out top here. The size, huh? Yeah, that's a familiar sight. He makes, uh, makes it very tough to go side to side. Go right at Ferrellman. There you go. Ruoff playing the back of that 1-3-1 one, one zone. Dixon a miss. Young in the right place. Didn't get the friendly bounce. Flowers the rebound with two and a half minutes to go. West Virginia the ball in a one-point lead. Two trips. Nothing for Pitt against the 1-3-1. One, one. And that throw penetration was effective. They got an offensive rebound. Just didn't finish it. And Ruoff taking advantage of fields. This is a great little play. Smart. Great touchdown. Is it? Now that we've seen Bob Huggins for two years in this league, you really get an appreciation of what a terrific coach he is. Jim Beheim was making that comment last night, unsolicited. So Bob Huggins has done a great job with this West Virginia team. Levance Fields, the answer for Pittsburgh. And they know. So you know, they prepare and see tape. Even if they're preparing for another team that Pitt's playing, or excuse me, West Virginia's playing, they understand what a guy can do, what he can get done. The win last night for Huggins, the 638th of his career. He's now 25th all time in wins. He moved out of a tie with the great Marv Harshman. In fact, in this building tonight, whistle away from the ball. We will have three of the four winningest active coaches. Coach K is number one, but right behind him among the active coaches are Calhoun, Beheim, and Huggins. Wow. And this guy will be there down the road someday, I think. And Jamie just keeps piling them on. He mentioned him catching every case. If he wins, he'll catch a lot of people. The image and the guy are far different, Sean. Bob Huggins. He's really a softy at heart. We saw that when he returned to Cincinnati and was moved to tears by the response he got from those people who love him so much. 
He's yes. still a young man, 638 wins. He's 55 years old. Well, Jay and I were moved to tears when we were signed for this event with you. <laughs> <laughs> you were so lucky, tears of joy. How about Deshaun Butler picking up that foul? They called an offensive foul on Butler trying to post up. He got a foul called on him defensively trying to guard Sam Young and now gets a foul. He just put that, looked like he put his right arm behind him a little bit and that's what they call. Look how he, he, he put that right, that's what they call that right arm behind. Oh, you gotta be able to touch that's the guy. That's, 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 the post that's really a bad, I mean, in the rule book, that's right. In the Big East, that's a bad yeah. call. I mean, <laughs> that is tough. I mean, that's some long. mayhem, there's some mayhem that happens and then you get that one. So Huggins rolled the dice. Butler knew he was playing with two fouls and he certainly didn't do anything he thought warranted his third, but it was called much to the chagrin of Bob Huggins. See, you know, when you have a rule and you, you're going to concentrate on it, they're going to clean up post offense and defense. That's not what that was all about. Well, they didn't clean it up on this end. Sam Young rode De uh, Deshaun Butler all the way out to the three point line. They called a foul on Butler. And he puts his right hand behind him on the other end and picks up a foul. Now watch this one. This happened earlier. Watch Young. He pushes him all the way out. Now right. Deshaun Butler was entitled to that spot, and he dislodged him and moved him all the way to the three-point line. They called that on Butler, and then they call that on the other end. If I were Bob Huggins, I'd be living. He was. He is. One minute to go in the half. Butler with three fouls. There sat out 16 minutes of this. First half for Pittsburgh, but it's going to be a tight game at the half, despite the fact that the Panthers played most of the half without the co biggest player of the year. And Fields on Rule off doing a real good job, not giving him towel on a bump by McGee. Let's see, he has a tendency to do that, the poor kid. There's a big guy trailing people on the perimeter, very tough to defend. He doesn't have that foot speed. Well, it's another foul field contest between these two teams. 19 fouls called now in the first half. Nine against Pittsburgh. There were 38 fouls called in the last meeting of the regular season between these two, and there were major foul problems on both sides. Blair and Fields for Pittsburgh in foul difficulty in the last game against the Mountaineers. Butler had his problems with the fouls for West Virginia. And you've got to figure, Jamie, not that you're satisfied, but just to be in this comfort zone with Blair ready to play that second half has to be you know, something positive for him to take to the locker room. And you never know how a guy, especially a big guy, is going to react in the second half after having sat for so long. Mm -hmm. well, I think he has a tendency not to be as aggressive defensively. Sticking with the 1-3-1. Small with Ruoff along the backside. Still think he can throw over the top. He can certainly screen Rue off and maybe get it into Young in the corner. And he also can rebound because of the size. That's why the wing people have to get down in this 1-3-1. One, one. About six seconds difference between the shot clock and game clock. Dixon couldn't shake Rue off. Ashton Gibbs looked up at the clock. Nice pass, Dixon underneath, and a lay-in by Nasir Robinson as Jamie Dixon has gone deep into his bench. Half running out, and will that count? Yes, says the outside official. They'll go to the monitor. Michael Stevens said, count the tip. And I think it was good. It was. A great looking, quick jack, and you got to come up with this. Those loose balls we talked about, anything for free, you got to get against Pittsburgh and it's no out of his, yep, easy call. Yep, in the air, point two or point one, but clearly ahead of the zeros. And Bob Huggins and West Virginia should have the lead here at the break. The official still looking at the monitor, but we believe it will be 36 34. That changes. Reese will update you as we send it back to the Cisco halftime report. I'm all over it, Sean, all over it.
And welcome back to Championship Week presented by Dick Sporting Goods and ESPN's coverage of the 2009 Big East Championship. Second half about to begin here at Madison Square Garden. West Virginia, the number seven seed, leading number two, Pittsburgh, by two. As we look at our first half stats, brought to you by Guinness. And what jumps out at you, Jay Phillips? Well, the free throws. 13 for 13 for West Virginia. Perfect from the line. Pittsburgh shooting over 50%. And the points in the paint. Pittsburgh is getting the ball into the lane to get easier baskets. And, now and the they stud did is that without Dewan Blair, who played only four minutes in the half. I was just going to say, the stud is back now. Uh, I thought West Virginia should have expanded this lead or been in control of the game, I should say. So go power now. Get into Blair and get control of the game if you're Pitt. Second half is about to begin. As we mentioned earlier, only three losses this season for Pittsburgh, and all three of them, Dewan Blair was in foul difficulty. They weathered the storm pretty well. When he left, the game was 9 to 4 in favor of Pittsburgh. West Virginia outscored Pitt by 7, 32 to 25, in the final 16 minutes of the half without Blair in the ball game. Of course, Bob Huggins has foul concerns of his own. Deshaun Butler has three. And he is not on the court to begin the second half for the Mountaineers who have the ball. Chuck Bryant to Kevin Jones along with Wellington Smith, Devin Ebanks, and Alex Ruoff for West Virginia. Now, Ruoff very active without the ball. I try to go at Blair right away. If Jones gets it, drive him. If you can involve him in some ball screening, move him around a little bit. Yeah, he's not going to chase his guy. on the shot clock as Devin Ebanks dropped it in. He has 11 points. He's had five double doubles in the last seven games. Didn't have one last night despite the 18 rebounds, but he had seven points. And that was Wanamaker. I mean, they, they should go to that uh, size problem. Blair. Watch his shoulder. That's the main area he's got to be concerned. And he got fouled by Wellington Smith. Nice move to the baseline by Dewan Blair. And now Smith has three fouls. He is quick, Jay. When he makes his decision, look at this a big and exploding. Well, he's just got really good feet, too. You know, he pivots, keeps his balance, uses that strength, and he's able to cover ground when he pivots. Did you use those bands around your muscle? Or did you have those kind of muscles? <laughs> Not like that. <laughs> I mean, you, you know, you wonder, are those sweat bands or headbands? <laughs> <laughs> for me? No, for, for him. Look at this. Is, are those headbands? Those of us who have arms like that, we, you do that to kind of, it highlights the guns, okay. as I like to say in the gym. Or in your case, the pistol, the water pistol. <laughs> <laughs> Second one falls off. Three point lead, West Virginia, one minute gone by. In the second half, the winner goes on to the semifinals. We'll play the winner of the game still to come tonight between Connecticut and Syracuse. And Wanamaker still match with Ebanks. I think he can do some damage. Now these curls at the top of the at the free throw line, Pitt is now switching. They've adjusted to that switch. Now West Virginia's got to adjust to that. Huggy Green, and what a play. Oh, what a cut, of course, by Ruoff. But that was the post-up mismatch taken advantage of. Ten points for Ruoff, the senior out of Spring Hill, Florida. Big East Scholar Athlete of the Year, the winner of the Sportsmanship Award. He's a 3-8 student, is a history major, academic All-American, one of only five players around the country to earn that honor this year. Great oh. shot, fake. <laughs> a lingerie on the deck. Yeah, that wasn't his old-fashioned pump, but it was pretty darn good, Jake. The, the use of deception by Sam Young. And the fact that he's got credibility because he is such a great shooter. The Ruoff shot rolled off, kept alive by Jones. And West Virginia pounding that offensive glass. It leads to a three for Daryl Bryant. Boy, that's the danger point. The kick out on offensive glass. I think it's the best time to shoot a three because everybody's inside the lane. Pretty much the, the entire defense is inside the lane and you've got a shooter stepping into his shot. I think it's the perfect time to shoot a three. Fields out to Dixon, Wanamaker wide open. Wide right the three. West Virginia has its largest lead of the game and it's come with DeWan Blair on the court for Pittsburgh. A six point lead for the Mountaineers. 
And Young almost took it away from the freshman Jones. Jones had the fade away with Young defending. Lavance Fields bumped by Bryant and fouled by Bryant. The two strong kids there banging one another. Watch out with this offensive rebound. Everybody inside the lane for Pittsburgh. Everybody. You pass it out, and all of a sudden, you got Truck Bryant stepping into his shot. That's pretty. Yes, now he's got the nickname Truck because he's not built like a truck. Sam Young to miss. He said he has a tennis offense just to put his head down and bowl people over. He dodged the traffic there and dumped it off to Ebanks for the dunk. Well, the truck providing a lift to his passenger. What a terrific look at the end. Hustling, scrapping. Love it. Take it to the bank. Maryland has rallied back there. It's West Virginia on the run here to take an eight-point lead as we go inside the play. Well, West Virginia getting a quick run out. Truck Bryant getting the ball, and watch here. You're supposed to stop the ball, but the stand is made a little bit too early here by LeVance Fields, and that's going to get a teammate of his posterized. Now, all of a sudden, Jermaine Dixon has to go to the ball. Then he has to try to stop Ebanks, and Ebanks dunks right in his face in large part because LeVance Fields just made his stand a little bit too early. Retreat and stop the ball a little bit further back. West Virginia, Sean, coming up with those three balls to start that fast break. Inside they go to Blair. That's an offensive yep. foul. And and that is an offensive foul. foul. Third, Cam Thurman defending and Bob Huggins restrained on the sideline. Well, you call, you call that foul on Deshaun Butler. And, and Blair, like, that's a Big East play. Mm -hmm. You know, if you didn't call a foul on Butler, then there's no problem with that. Yeah, Thurman, Thurman turned it over to Wanamaker, and Thurman fouled him at the other end. You know, we, we talk about post play all the time. You cannot dislodge a man. He, that is an offensive foul, period. And Jim Burr is standing there like a scarecrow. Ooh, that's ridiculous. Big East basketball at his best. Hey, hey, they called that foul on Deshaun Butler. And that, you know, you compare those two, that is an offensive foul by any definition. Officials know the numbers as well. I mean, Cam Thurman, Cam Thurman was entitled to that position. He got it, and he was entitled to it, and he was dislodged and sent to the floor. So Thurman goes out. After the foul, he's replaced by John Flowers. Wanamaker, the free throw shooter, makes it a four-point game. Nearly four minutes gone by, second half. You know, when Brian plays well, uh, Chuck, you mentioned before, Sean, it really frees Ruoff to do a whole lot more things. They got a combo point guard position, but he's active without the ball, Ruoff. Ooh. Pittsburgh, the defending champion in the Big East Tournament. They won it here last year. West Virginia hasn't won a conference tournament since 1984 when they were in the Atlantic 10. Dixon bouncing to the bucket. Too strong rebound Jones. He was smacked by Dixon who got away with it. West Virginia getting what they want on offense right now. Jones missed that open jumper on penetration, but good clean looks they're getting with this efficient offensive maneuvering. Driving. Nice post up on fields. Oh, Flowers <laughs> missed a wide open layup, but made it the second time. You know, you don't see college teams taking advantage of mismatches, Jay. Not often. And right now, Huggins doing a terrific job. Quick three by Young. Go on, Blair. Fouled on the putback. Just an amazing offensive rebounder. Amazing. He'll be at the line when we come back. With Deshaun Butler on the bench. West Virginia prospering. We'll take a look at Pitt's improbable run in last year's championship when we come back. For Pittsburgh, their 
fourth game in as many nights. A rematch of the championship game a year ago. Young posting and jamming. They're crushing the Hoyas on the glass. Ramon is wide open. Pittsburgh, the champions of the Big East. After a relatively disappointing regular season last year to win the four games in four days here in New York, become just the second team to win four games in four days of the Big East Championship and take the title. Syracuse, in memorable fashion, did it in 2006. Sam Young was the MVP last year. And of course, West Virginia, if they're going to win this Big East tournament, would have to win four games in four days. Jamie Dixon's squad had the bye last night, so they'd only have to win three in three. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> but as Bob Huggins said to us before the game, it would be easier to make it to the final four this year than it would be to win this Big East tournament. He'd have to beat Notre Dame, Pittsburgh, and then perhaps Connecticut tomorrow night and Louisville in the championship game. Pitt, Connecticut, and Louisville all in the top five in the country right now. You know, Jay mentioned their defense not being as good, at least in his mind. They better start playing West Virginia a little bit better, standing them up. Playing better post defense. Yeah, the statistics back it up too. The scoring defense is not as good for Pitt. It's been in recent years. The field goal percentage defense is not as good as it has been in recent years. But they can step it up as they did against UConn. It looks like a serious trip right here. John Flowers a rare three ball. Perhaps he should shoot more of them. That's just his sixth three of the year for the sophomore from Waldorf, Maryland. His game is blossoming. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. The 1-3-1. One, one. is, uh, excuse me, Blair is not out there guarding him. He's playing off of him. And that opens up a wide open jumper for him. He's the 1-3-1 one, one now. you got to be patient. Nice ball movement. And be immediately careful. double Blair. It doesn't matter. He had the strength to get through it, but then he missed the shorty and Flowers Continuing the blossom, pulled down the rebound. When he makes a mistake, will you say flowers wilting? Yes. <laughs> I'll leave that for you. Seven point lead and the ball for West Virginia. They lost twice to Pitt in the regular season. Butler back in the game short with a jumper. Deshaun did not begin the second half. He got his third foul late in the first half. And boy, the 50 50s West Virginia is getting. Anything loose, picking it up. Can you imagine the rebounding drills that Bob Huggins has in practice? Oh. Yeah, I, I can. These guys really pursue the ball. Butler hacked. There have been 10 offensive rebounds for West Virginia tonight. That they had 20 against Notre Dame last night. Just joining us earlier today. Louisville handled Providence with ease, 73-55, probably extinguishing the Friars NCAA tournament hopes. Providence had 26 turnovers in the game. And Villanova squandered a 17-point lead and then won on a buzzer beater by Dwayne Anderson. Gilbert Brown is in for Wanamaker, who has three fouls. And that particular play against Villanova, nice bounce pass, old-fashioned by Redding. What a crushing finish for Marquette. They had made a terrific second half comeback. Both teams really fought. Yep. And how about Keno Davis, the Providence coach, after the game saying he thinks they're in? You know, I with, think he's wrong. I think he is way wrong. Especially you lose by 18, turn it over 26 times. Well, they had to play tough. If they lost, it had to be like a buzzer game. And you take away the memorable win against Pittsburgh and give the Friars all their credit for being number two in the country. Well, they lost by 19 points, I believe it was, at home to Notre Dame late in the regular season. They lost by double digits to Villanova. They lost by double digits today. I mean, they were not impressive down the stretch. We talked about their 10 conference wins, but against a weaker schedule. No non-conference wins to speak of. Got beat by St. Mary's on a neutral floor. But if you're the coach, you got to be positive like that. I mean, you got to think that way. But there's the perception, too, that you know they were a much improved team this year. To me, they had an all-senior team. They had Sherrod Curry at point guard. Didn't play all of last year. Coming back, they have five 1,000-point scorers. They've won four more games than they did last year, and that's with the point guard back playing all year. So probably about what 
should have happened or even perhaps not as good as could have been expected. I think they're wondering who had possession on this, but this 1-3-1, one, it feels on, uh, not the kind of guy that makes these mistakes, but once again, they don't come clean with it, West Virginia, but they're so active in pursuing it, an equal opportunity ball they're coming up with. Yeah, they were just looking at the shot clock there because there was no change in possession. They didn't, wasn't sure there was a change in possession. Now they are. There's that pump and a bite. And Young got all the way to the bucket, missed a finger roll. Jones had it poked away. Field pass deflected, and Dixon runs it down near midcourt. Still 30 seconds to shoot for Pittsburgh. Fields won't use the time. It's an air ball out of bounds off. Whoa, it looked like Sam Young was last to touch, and that's what the West Virginia bench thinks. And this 1-3-1 one, one has really been difficult. Uh, we mentioned that John Beeline used to do it. Bobby Huggins looked at the tape to make sure what Pitt ran against it. And it's had its impact. A little wrinkle. He didn't like the call shot. Oh, I thought Sam Young was the last to touch it. And now uh, Juwan Blair is fouled. That's a big call in the possession. And Bob Huggins is still upset about it. The second foul on Ebanks. Juwan Blair at the line. Two shots. Here's Blair, who had five points in the four minutes in which he played in the first half. Banks in. He'll take it. Uh, they have been a little off their game. A little softer. You know, he's just 62% for the year, but the last five games he shot 83% from the line, 19 out of 23. And well, those, so he was trying to bank that one in, too. Those are two of the most unattractive scores you'll see for the free throw line a combo but they look sweet on the statue exactly. nice fade by Ebanks kids great without the ball well it grew up pretty good with the ball as well 12 points and that's without a three-point field goal tonight. All of his buckets have been twos. And he used the rim very nicely to shield off the attempted shot block by Sam Young. Pretty play by Fields. Young shot block. Young fouled on the putback. The fouls have really piled up for West Virginia in the second half. That's their 16 foul. Jay, I know you were a stationary postman. You didn't have many moves to get free. And when you got free, they didn't give it to you. But rule up. They let him finish. I've been scored on by better players. <laughs> Here in New York, Hashim Thabit and the Yukon Huskies arriving at Madison Square Garden. They'll be the last team to play their first game of this championship. The nightcap against Syracuse. Connecticut has lost its last three games in the Big East Championship. And Connecticut won the regular season meeting at Camp at the Billion and Stores. Yeah, we had a chance to see that, uh, Sean, uh, to be the big impact player that particular night. Be interesting to see how they go at him, how, how their offensive mindset is. The beat had seven block shots and 16 rebounds in that regular season win. <laughs> Lope, pump did he just free shot too? fake on a free throw? Well, he's practicing for later on. Look at the smile. He may have lost the ball. Trying to get a violation. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> and nobody nobody went for it. Is it. You know what? They're so well trained. <laughs> Don't bite on his shot fake, even on a free throw. <laughs> <laughs> Fouls are 6-1 to one here in the second half. West Virginia's been called for six. 2-3 zone now by Pittsburgh. Now, Ruoff, you got to be careful. Pack the shooters. Ruoff looking for his first three of the night. Didn't get it to fall. Back down in the corner by Tyrell Biggs. Now the Vance Fields and ahead to Gilbert Brown. And I like the change. You know, you're not, your team's not playing well. Throw a new wrinkle, just like the 1 3 1 has had its impact. You do something different. There's the flash by Young. Gilbert Brown open for three. Long rebound out to Fields near the free throw line. Young had Flowers running out. And Blair was the last to touch it. And we have a technical foul called. And I believe it's on DeLon Blair. Jim Burr pointing right at him. And they got to get him. He can't go after the official to get another one. Threw an elbow, he said. said after he threw an arm.
Uh, not, uh, the frustration vented. Oh, no. no it's not, not on there. Oh, there. Uh, even, that, even that, I don't know. Unbelievable. I mean, I see the push and all. I think it's just a talking point, wouldn't you? Yeah, it, listen, technically, it's the right call. I mean, that's what the rule book says. That's the point of emphasis and all that stuff. But Blair drops his shoulder and lays out a defender. They don't call anything. And they call a, you know, a little love tap and by Big E standards. So Ruoff at the free throw line. Very good free throw shooter, as you might expect, since he was the choice to go up there at 80.5%. Number 22, Grant Lockmaker replaced Three fouls now on Blair, and that one was just silly. Yeah, not, not really called for, you know. Ruoff isn't going to go down bang the glass with him. No retaliation in, involved. All three of his fouls really were pretty unnecessary. Mm -hmm. That's a high percentage of your comments, but also fit that description tonight. <laughs> e Banks fouls on the way to the bucket. Uh, a nice little play by Ebanks too. They were static. They're not moving and taking advantage of a little bounce into the lane. Well, how about his shot fake? That got Blair into the air. And an easy little trip to the rim. Can you envision how good this young guy's going to be? It is scary how good he's going to be. He's got big time talent and he's got he's clearly got an aptitude for the game. Great demeanor. And the flowers over there talking to Bob Huggins saying, Coach, get the suit pressed. First free throw made by Ebanks. Devin has 253 rebounds in his freshman year. Second highest freshman total in West Virginia history. Let's go back to Warren Baker in 1973-74, 279 boards. Ebanks, another one of those New York City area players from Long Island City. Played at St. Thomas More Prep in Connecticut where he scored more than a thousand points in two years there. Played in the Jordan All-Star game last year. Blair back on the bench after the technical saddled him with his third foul. Right. And I think that's where the danger is of, of taking a kid out for the entire first half after he picks up the second foul. It could obviously backfire if you put him back in too. There's no right way to do it. But he clearly has not gotten any rhythm or in sync in this game. You know who I think may have started? John Cheney, a lot of a lot of his year did it. And John Thompson as well, where they saved the two. Shot clock running out, a three missed by Gibbs. Largest lead of the night for West Virginia. Ten points, and they have the ball. Pittsburgh has not made a three-point field goal tonight. Oh out of seven now from beyond the arc, and they're one of the best percentage teams in the Big East at 36%. You know, Fields is really having his troubles with Ruoff. He's not used to playing a guy without the ball like that. Sneaky to peaks. Oh, he's out. Timeout. Pittsburgh, 17 points for the terrific freshman, Devin Ebanks. Now, you talked about how good he is. He's got a comfort zone right now. His ability to put it on the floor, to post up. How about the space dribble? You don't come out. Range on a little bit of a fade. Watch the skinny guy. Well, he's not only got great talent, he's got great instincts. A very good passer. And he rebounds at an extraordinarily high rate. He's had two 17 rebound games, 18 rebounds last night. That young man has got game. Yeah, he's got gun. <laughs> double figures in scoring three banks and 10 out of the last 11. The only time in the last 11 he didn't make it a double digits was last night when he had seven points but had the 18 rebounds and the 17 points is a career high now. He had twice scored 16 in a game this year. The 18 rebounds last night a career high. I have a feeling before his career's over, he'll surpass those numbers. You know what's interesting? Last night, all the nonsense that transpired, he just plays. He doesn't say anything. Mm -hmm. And just does his job out there. He's got a nice demeanor. And everybody's more impressed with him. Yeah. Yeah. He just plays. Mm -hmm. We all can learn from this. 
I would assume by all you include yourself. I do, I do. <laughs> Learning group. Fields right down the side of the lane. Missed the layup. Rebound Butler. Pulled it out of traffic. Under nine and a half to go. Jamie Dixon's team in trouble now. Down by 12. Not, not enough pass fakes by Pitt when they're uh, going against the West Virginia 1-3-1. Oh, that would have made it a 15-point game. Butler's three rattled out. Flowers had the rebound, and then it was knocked out of bounds by Dixon. So West Virginia will play it in. Blair comes back in, and Young goes to the Panthers bench. And, and Sean, Flowers just exhibited what's been transpiring all game long. It's up for grabs. We want it. We're going to get it. We're going to prevail. And Pittsburgh, the great offensive rebounding team because of Blair. But Blair not playing 16 minutes in that first half took away a lot of the offensive rebounding punch of Pittsburgh. He can elevate over fields. Threw off a floater in the middle of the lane. And the number two seed in the Big East Championship, the number two team in the country, Pittsburgh, on the ropes now at the Garden, down by 14 after an eight-nothing run by the Mountaineers. And not a good match. Fields on Ruoff. Pitt would throw some pass fakes here. They could make this defense move without having to move the ball and then attack it. Panthers have missed 10 straight shots. That ends on the easy one for Tyrell Biggs. He has six. Well, you use that bounce against anything, particularly this 1 3 1. You got to get into the teeth. Oh, not a good pass by Flowers. Dixon, good anticipation. Had trouble picking up the ball, so he waited for the help from Gibbs. And the Panthers chipping away four straight points to get back within 10, eight minutes to go here in New York. We may have to call Gibbs the toaster. The microwave is Vinnie Johnson, or was, I should say. This kid gets in and lights it up. Well, he got hit in the eye, Rule off. Well, he's asking for time, and they get it while the Techie saw it. It was a clean play. Uh, Fields just put his hand up to deny the pass. Got him in a bad spot. I think he might be a contact lens wear based on be. the way he's there reacting. Right there. That's probably the case. Timeout, 10 point game. Oh, if Ty Lawson is unable to go at full strength, you know, Florida State as the four seed in the ACC tournament, the top of that bracket. That's a pretty good break for them. Mm -hmm. Bobby Fraser gonna have to play and do a job. The combo with Danny Green as well. Ruoff seems to have solved the contact lens problem, but he is on the bench as play resumes. Down to seven to shoot for West Virginia. Up by 10, up by 12 as the floater goes for Deshaun Butler, the junior from Newark, New Jersey. Nice little step back, discard, and then nail it. Chuck Bryant has done a nice job staying in front of the Vance field. Oh, he's got it. So he's still taking the jumper. And Fields banks it home. Just four points for LeVance. Two out of eight from the floor for the floor general of the Panthers. You know, Jay, this offense they run uses clock. And yet they can be a threat. Gonna, uh, Bob wants a timeout to get rule off in. And they can control the game a little bit. Yeah, it's five, five out motion. Yeah. And they do a very good job of running it, getting good movement, and it's going to move those Pittsburgh big guys around. This is the third game of the day, the quarterfinal round here at Madison Square Garden. Earlier today, Louisville had an easy time against Providence. Took advantage of 26 prior turnovers. Earl Clark. Had 24, Samardo Samuels, the dunk, part of his 22-point performance. And then the game of the tournament so far, Dwayne Anderson at the buzzer. Got the bouncer off the rim after Villanova had blown a 17-point lead. Marquette led by one before that bucket. They went to the monitor to make sure that he got it off in time, and he clearly did. Jay Wright told us before our game here tonight, he wasn't sure that ball was going to bounce in. It took a couple of funky bounces on the rim before it finally 
drop through and the terrific season for Villanova continues. Unbelievable. And one of the best defenders in the country, Jarrell McNeil, a senior, made a defensive mistake on that last play, something you hardly ever see from him. Stepped up, did not see his guy, and a great old-fashioned bounce pass. And Louisville and Villanova, they played a memorable game in the regular season in Philadelphia. One-point win for the Cardinals when Villanova had three nice. shots in the final seconds and couldn't make one. Flowers off the feed from Smith. A nice little back screen, little slice cut. That was beautiful. It's nice little diagonal, huh? Where they set you up beautifully. And a moving strain, and it's on Blair, and it's his fourth. And just a different team when he's on track. Why, why he leaned into it like that, I just don't understand. Inexperience, really. You know, just, just use that big body and let the guard use the screen. And if he doesn't set his man up, you know, that's his fault. The dribbler has to do it. That's that little back screen, Jay. Pretty play. Oh, that's really well done. Zipper, ball screen. They make you run and the clock winds down. How about this scoop? Woo. Young block the shot by Ruoff. Look out here, they come right over by us. Smith took it away. The shot clock did not reset. Ruoff underneath, two to shoot. And it wouldn't fall for Ebanks. Rebound big. Last touched by West Virginia. And Jamie Dixon perplexed. This is a very poor performance by the high standard set by the Panthers. Well, they're, they're not recognized right now by them. Uh, they just have not performed, and, and West Virginia's taken it to them. Blair has never gotten in sync. Foul trouble early, out 16 minutes in the first half. He's not been the same, and Pittsburgh hadn't been the same. And the 1 3 1 has just mesmerized them as well. They have not been able to attack it. A nice ploy by Bobby and his guys. Bob Huggins said before the game tonight the key would be for West Virginia to score. They didn't score enough in the first two games. They've scored more points tonight than they did in either of the two regular season losses to Pittsburgh. 15 point lead, the largest of the game for West Virginia. And Flowers now with 12 points. A couple of the threes tonight. He started the night with five threes for the year. He's made two, and he's two points shy of his season high. Whew. Well, the question is, if it stays like this, I mean, most people think Pittsburgh is a lock for a number one seed regardless. If they lose here tonight, is that number one seed status in question? The only way it could be is if Louisville were to run the table and beat Connecticut in the final. And then you've got uh, uh, Oklahoma were to run the table in the Big 12. It's possible. I don't see it happening. I, I still think that, that Pittsburgh, especially beating Connecticut twice mm -hmm. during the regular season, would have earned a number one seed. It would be awfully hard to knock them out just because of one loss in the tournament. And you think of Kansas, too, losing today. I mean, that will damage it, not for number one. But it might impact on a line. But I don't think with this team, and I agree with Oklahoma. If Oklahoma wins, it's uh, pretty simple. I think pick, two, I'm pick, sorry. The, no, no, I was going to say, pick could drop if Oklahoma won, and a lot of, a lot of things can happen in the next couple of days. Yeah, I think Pitt's pretty solid number one seed regardless. 28 and three for the year, 15 and three in the Big East. If this lines up in the last column, their four losses would be to Louisville, Villanova, at Providence, and to this West Virginia team, none of them against slouches and you know you didn't practice against the one three one i'm sure you're unaccustomed to it you don't think they practice against the one three no, one i'm sure if they did they didn't do it as conscientiously as did everything else do you know what i mean because west virginia shown it enough you had to expect no, it no not this year not this much well, they, they, they show it no they show it no i know but not for a minute you know not for as the length of time as tonight they only practiced it 10 minutes before the nd game Strong drive, but Butler couldn't finish. Pittsburgh needs a bunch of points in a hurry here, nearing four minutes to go. They're down by 15. 
Fields gets them two. And they'll bring some pressure. At least Fields will. The rest of his teammates have retreated to midcourt. Blair getting ready to come back in. It might be too late. When you've got a lead like this, you still have to close out under control. And West Virginia did not do that. That gave up the lane and the easy basket for LeVance Field. And a foul on Dixon as he tried to deny the pass into the low post. Timeout, 3.46 to go here in New York City. Under three minutes to go. In Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, the Bedlam Series. This is the backyard brawl being played away from the backyards of West Virginia and Pittsburgh tonight in New York City, where Dewan Blair's been in foul trouble all night long and foul difficulty for the big man, the common denominator in their losses. The Mountaineers couldn't get the ball in and use another timeout. Well, one of the problems they had, Bob Huggins had to call his team back down from the other end. He was yelling at him, saying, hey, it's our ball. They were down on the other end to play defense. <laughs> That's a bit of a problem. A formality. Bob Huggins has coached in conference tournaments in six different leagues. He's won nine conference tournament championships in the Ohio Valley at Akron. He won five times in the great Midwest when he was at Cincinnati five in a row in the early and mid 90s. And he won three conference USA tournament championships. At Cincinnati, and of course, in late February, he returned to the program he brought back to glory, and he was quite emotional by the tremendous response he got from those folks who love and appreciate him so much. Great feeling for him and his family. And, and the toughest thing I've ever seen him have to endure was when Kenyon Martin was hurt in the Conference USA finals, and they ended up a two seed, as I recall, and broke his leg. And just uh, the kid had a great, great career, and obviously doing well in the pros in the Nets in November. But they had the best team in the country. Yeah, they did. They did. Huggins yeah. spent 16 years at Cincinnati for the departure. Ten seconds now on the shot clock. Oof. Wellington Oof. Smith flattened Sam Young and got called for the foul. That's one of those, uh, if he moved, it's... Illegal. I think he was there, and then the reaction of going to the ground was what caused the call. I, I think he was established. He was established. And I guess it, it's so hard Space. when somebody's running at you full speed not to bring your arms up to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah, that didn't look like it was a foul to me. It looked like a clean screen that Sam Young just didn't see. That's the first time they flashed and got it to that spot with an elbow. And then a little kiss at the end, and Butler pleading, not me. And after the far foul by Smith, I'm with Bob Huggins from our bench, but it was hard to see how Sam Young got fouled there, but Wally Ritecki called a foul on Butler, and that's his fourth. Well, it's amazing when something works, you, you wonder why we've been doing that and not doing it consistently. The three-point play gets Pitt back within 10 and a long way to go, 3.04 remaining. Biggs comes in for Blair. Offense, defense, substitution. Blair will come back in for offense and offensive rebound. Uh, Pitt not known for full court pressure. Here's the extended trap. They're going to look over the top as they do here. Now Ebanks is a very good ball handler. The 6'9 freshman. A little too early to start fouling. You don't want to do that. There's a 10 point deficit. You get a stop and a score and another stop. Look at this a different game. Ruoff missed a three. And a foul against oh. Pittsburgh. They have it on Dixon on the rebounding action. Wow. Four well, bigs. It's on Dixon, his second. Now they thought they did a great job screening off on that particular play. Wow. Oh, boy. Boy. It's the Big game. East, gentlemen. Wow. That's incredible. And you think of it, Jay, you got the rebound, you're going the other way. Uh, the, plus yeah. the rebound went that went to the other side. Yeah. And Giorno, who's heating up, it's West Virginia at the free throw it's line. Only Collins. one miss. 18 out of 19 from the line. It's West Virginia team that shoots 68.6 collectively for the year. That's a bad call. We have seen a number of calls that only can be described as bad calls tonight in the league that is typically very well officiated. 
And this has not lived up to the standard. And that was the 16 foul, by the way. And it gives you more clock. And again, this ability to pass, cut, pass screen, use the flex just as they're doing on the other side and this side. West Virginia using the time. Down to 15 on the shot clock. 2.20 to go, a 10-point lead. Now, you don't want to foul if you're pit at this point. Now, just play good D, force a tough shot, rebound, and go. Butler from the NBA three line. That is an air ball out of bounds to Pitt. They used all the two seconds of the shot clock. And get Blair back in now. The offense. They were on defense a long time there because of the questionable foul called against Dixon on the rebounding action. Now you, when you shoot, now you're going to have to chase if you're Pitt. Get after it. You can do some damage on the glass. One, two, one, four, something. Use a little clock. Fields to the bucket. Spun it onto the rim. Blair in the right spot. It's an eight point game. Defense only again. Who do you start fouling? Well, I, I, well, I think they try I and steal it early. Yeah. You defend. Seven straight for Pitt. And it looked like they were dead and buried. Decision here. Good job. Wow. That's usually your point guard that makes that decision. They still have to get out and pressure. They're just allowing them to. So I'd say this is the last trip that they play solid. They're playing without Bryant. Ordinarily, their point guard on the floor. Of course, Joe Mazzola was their starting point guard at the beginning of the year, but he missed most of the year with a shoulder injury. Ruoff, nice move. It popped out. Ebanks is there, and then he got fouled. I think it was Blair, too. That's it. Yes, it is. It's on Dewan Blair, and he has fouled out. Third time he's fouled out. They lost the other two games. And they're in serious danger here. Failing by eight, 117 to go, and free throws coming. This is the one you got to get this rebound if you're pit. I mean, it's an absolute must. And once again, Ebanks in the middle, the thick of things, made a great decision. They got the ball back. But nobody blocked out. Yep. I mean, Blair didn't block out. Nobody blocked out. And Ebanks just ran in from the perimeter without anybody laying a body on him. Now, now let's say they happen to lose here, Sean. Pitt, in a way, all week getting ready, preparation, mindset, a lot of positives can come out of this. I mean, it's not the end of the world. The yeah. Talking about, yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, you don't want to think about that now, but it's a grind to win this thing. You mentioned they're in the final just about every year, seven out of the last eight here at the Big East Championship and they've been largely disappointing in the NCAA tournament so perhaps a quick exit might serve them well when the big dance begins they're starting to feel it on the West Virginia bench trying to get back to the semifinals for the second year in a row a free throw by Ebanks the first West Virginia point in nearly four minutes 356 between points you know, Bill, Bill, you make a really good point, but you saw Jamie Dixon there. I think you'd rather win than risk it. Oh, no, no, no. I, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. No question about it. Well, there's anybody to talk about what happens when you leave the Big East tournament quickly as a coach. Bill will be <laughs> well qualified. I set the record. Why do you think I got out? Feels for the discard. Wow. Thank you so much. It's been that kind of day for them. And Fields still hollering at Wally Rutecki as he's called for that's the that's foul, a, his first. It's a horrible call. And the hands were in there, too. It'll be two horrible. hands on the body. And you stick your hands out. He didn't, he didn't have initial guarding position. You stick your hands out. That's an automatic foul on the defense. Automatic. You got to They had a pass to rule off, too, but... Pitt's got to stop it somehow. Has gone all the way the into the court, so someone's going to have to retrieve it. Or Fields rolled it down, just bowled it down to the other end. But he likes to bowl. That's one of his hobbies. They have a number of bowlers on that Pitt team. Tyrell Biggs, the big bowler. Amazing the research you do. Wanamaker's just fouled out. And Fisher's are uh, just now going to tell Jamie Dixon that Wanamaker was the second Panther to fall out. Now we talked about mental toughness at the beginning of this game as well as physical. 
And a great display by Huggies guys. And getting immersed in this game, taking it to them. Anything that was for free, they made sure they got their pieces of it. How about this? A young team coming into this stage against one of the two or three best teams in the country in Pittsburgh, and the response from guys like Devin Ebanks and Jones and Flowers, mm -hmm. Smith, Truck Bryant. A heck of a game by West Virginia. Sure, and everything, Jay. Whoa, Very get impressive. That on tape. <laughs> Might be a first this season. <laughs> West Virginia's 20 out of 22 from the free throw line. And give them credit. A lot of the teams that have played on consecutive days here have looked like they've been running out of gas in the second half. They look fresh as a daisy here down the stretch. Uh, you know, you mentioned the backyard brawl. Uh, maybe that's part of it, too. You know, we're losing two. And this 1 3 1 has been awfully good to West Virginia in the second half. I think we'll see a lot, lot more of this thing. Putting the Ebanks out there, forcing a side. And as the colorful West Virginia football coach Bill Stewart might say, plenty of uh, Mountaineer fans have come down from the Happy Hillside to New York City tonight. And they will celebrate in Manhattan a victory over their arch rivals from 75 miles away. This 178th edition of the Backyard Brawl is going to go to West Virginia. Deshaun Butler at the line, two shots. Deshaun Butler. Made history earlier this year with a 43-point game against Villanova. It's the second highest point total by a West Virginia player ever at the Coliseum. Will Robinson at 45 back in 1971. Pretty good player, Will. It's interesting. Bobby was getting his team to step up even at the stage. Don't give them a quick hitter. Make them work. Use some clock. Field stopped on the dribble. Jamie Dixon wanted to foul. So let's ask you the most important question then since you made the observation last night. Will we see Bob Huggins outfit for the third day? Yes. In Santa say. Will it, will it make a quick trip to the dry cleaners? He said no. No. Doesn't want to take the wins out of it. I asked you before the game when you wear the outfit two days in a row, but they stand a little bit further away from the house. So they never like to get close to me, no matter what I'm wearing, <laughs> clean clothes or not. Uh, only this dry cleaner knows. The foul is an instant second. The crowd booing because of the foul, but Alex Ruoff not, not upset. He gets to pad some stats, yeah. get a few, a few more looks at the basket. It's not the suit I worry about with Bobby. Well, I've been saying it all year long. I still think Pittsburgh is a Final Four team. Mm -hmm. I think like Kansas last year, a team that had had several years in a row, a lot of wins, but not succeeding in the NCAA tournament. I think mean, this is the year the Panthers are going to get over that NCAA tournament. Yeah, you know, people just watching them for the first time don't understand how good this team is. And just uh, a little more meaningful for West Virginia. Sam Young flipped one up off balance. And the final 10 seconds are ticking off. Mountaineer Nation celebrating. Ebanks a career high 20, Ruoff 18, Butler 16. As is so often the case under Bob Huggins, a team effort for West Virginia. And they go back to the Big East semifinal for the second year in a row. Last year they lost in the semis to the number one seed, Georgetown. So three of the semifinalists have been determined, and among the top eight seeds, we have our first upset. The storm held on the other side of the bracket. Number one, Louisville, and number four, Villanova, will play tomorrow night in the first semifinal. West Virginia will get the winner of the game still to come here tonight between the third seed, Connecticut, and number six, Syracuse. We'll have that ball game for you very shortly right here on ESPN. Guys, an impressive performance by a very good and very young West Virginia team with only the one senior. Well, they did a great job on the glass. They were outstanding in their defense in the second half, especially that 1-3-1. Alex Ruoff, Devin Ebanks, I thought, led the way. Outstanding performance. And here's Allen Hopkins. Coach Huggins, your best offensive performance against Pittsburgh in three games. How are you guys so successful offensively? I thought we had great patience offensively. We shot a little quick early, and we just wanted to make them guard. And uh, 
Alex made Alex made big plays. Deshaun made some big shots. Devin was huge. He's been huge in the last part of the year. And now we just we ran good offense. And the key defensively is you guys really held them in check all night. Well, we were changing defenses, trying to find something that worked, and I I think the one three one worked pretty good for us. All right, thanks, Coach. Alex Delone, senior on this team. I know you wanted to make this trip to New York, your last one, very memorable. What was the mindset of your group of players coming into the night? You know, revenge. That's what was on our mind. They, they outmanned us two games this year, at home and at Pitt. And we wanted to come out, and if we're going to lose a game, we're not going to get out tough. And that's what we did. Devin Ebanks seems to be having a coming out party, career high in rebounds, career high in points. How about his development this season? He's a heck of a player, man. He came in with a big name, and he's living up to the hype. He's uh, no longer playing like a freshman. He's the key reason why we're getting these wins. All right, thanks, Alex. All right, thanks. Appreciate it. Back to you. Yeah, Ebanks is impressive not only in his skills, but in the way he comports himself. He doesn't have an ounce of hot dog in him. So West Virginia moves on. The final score, the Mountaineers 74 and Pittsburgh 60. Coming up next on ESPN, more championship week action presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. More from the 2009 Big East Championship, Syracuse and Yukon. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Jay Bill and I will be back in a couple of minutes, but now to Reese Davis in the studio, it's the college basketball scoreboard. All right, Sean, so a 14-point victory for the Mountaineers in the brawl knocks Pitt out of the Big East tournament. West Virginia going at least to the semis for the second straight year.